Hello, hello, good day. How are you doing today, guys? Um, how is everybody doing and how is the week been? I hope um, we're all having great luck in our farms, our businesses. Um, welcome to Farmer Up TV once again. And um, thank you for joining us. And um, also, um, we have a great news. We've been really trending on YouTube. Uh, we are about um, 900 to 1,000 subscribers right now, which is marvelous. Thank you guys for joining up. Thank you for um, being part of the show and watching our, uh, our, our show and also subscribing. Let's keep it going, guys. And uh, very soon, we should be coming up with something very... Um, you know, something good to share with us to still help our, our channel keep growing. And uh, remember to still like, share, subscribe, and, um, and you know, let um, everybody know that um, they can watch the show. And um, thank you again, once again, for joining us. And um, today we're going to be talking um, about um, a very unique um uh, mm -hmm. uh, topic which is um, about camels and uh, we also have a, a, um, an important guest who has been on the show before to talk about um, um, dairy milk who is going to be talking to us about it um, Alaji um, Ali Ulawao who is um, very prominent um, in this area and um, that's what he does basically um, he is a farmer in casting a state in Nigeria and um, is into fattening of um, of um, cat cows and um, also milk production. So, and um, which is milk production for cows and camel as well. So we're going to be um, having him on the, sh on the show. He's going to be talking to us about um, camel production and milk production on camels. Uh, which is a very unique topic. While we're waiting for him to join us today, um, you know, like I said, we're still uh, uh, we're very happy that um, you know we are trained. We 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 keep going up. Um, we have more viewership on on the show, and um, we're very grateful to you guys for joining for joining us and subscribing. Uh, thank you for being part of the show. Um, but we're just going to wait for Alaji to come online and um, then we should um, be able to continue the show proper. Uh, just give me a minute. I'm going to, you know, play the intro once again to see if um, Alaji will be able to join us by then. All right, um, we're still waiting on Alaji to join us. And um, let's talk a little bit more about um, what's going on right now in Nigeria with all the Katsu Rera um, protest and, um, you know, all these issues. Um, we're hoping that, you know, something should get uh, resolved. Uh, we don't want to stop, you know, anything that would, um, you know, bring hunger to Nigeria. We don't need that. We need to work together to find a lasting solution to all this issue. Um, you know, I always have the opinion that, you know, having a ranch is the best way to go. And uh, so it means that we need to get on board on having ranches, you know, you know, done the proper way so that um, we'll be able to, you know, farm properly. Um, there's a lot of advantage in having ranch, you know, a cattle ranch or or a farm ranch, an animal ranch, basically. You don't have to ga gra graze around them um, with, you know, have, ga have your cattle walk around and everything. That's why if you look at um, cattle in Nigeria and cattle abroad, yeah, there's always a unique difference in there. And, um, you know, let's do things the proper way and um you know hopefully we'll be able to find a lasting solution to all this problem no country needs so much um issues and problem going on 
let's um, come together, all parties, farmers, the um, the Fulani headsmen, you know, let's try and work up something that would last longer. All right. Um, so we're still, you know, the show today is still about car, um, camel farm and uh, milk. And, uh, you know, there's some unique things I've read about this. And I'm just waiting on Elijah to join us so that um, we'll be able to, you know, talk to him and he'll give us some clue and some answers on, on, on you know, that we are dying to, to know about how we can also become, you know, camel ranchers, you know. Let's just wait on him and hopefully he should join us in, in, in another few minutes. All right, guys, uh, we're still waiting on Alaji to join us, and um, we're still not um, lucky right now. Um, what can we talk about? Um, I've been thinking, I've been having the opinion of um, having an online um, conference. If you know you would want to be part of this, where we'll be able to have different farmers come online on a live program and we'll be able to talk about um, our experiences, um, how to make things better, not just like, um, you know, a free for all kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe let's, let's not say free for all, let's say maybe about 10, 10 farmers. So if you know you would like to be part of this, you know, just um, send us a comment on, on the show today or preferably send us an email um, our email is um, farmerobng at gmail.com. Send us an email and um, that, then we should be able to um, join in. All right. So, you know, they will, then that would that'll be the best bet. So, you know, uh, like I said, let's um, wait on Alaji, see if um, we'll be able to get him on the show. Just um, give me a um, few minutes, okay?
All right, guys. I'm so sorry about, um, you know, what's going on today. Um, it's just a little bit of technical issue. He's really trying to log in, but um, we, we, I don't know, for some reason, you know how it is. It's just something that happens once oh, in a while. And, um, you know, we'll try to resolve it and get him logged in so that uh, we can start the show proper. All right. Um, so like I was saying before, I was hoping that we could get like 10 different um, um, farmers. It doesn't have to be maybe, um, it could be any field of farming, any sector. We just want to get so like a conference going where we can all talk, share ideas, how to move um, things better on um, on Farmer TV. So we want, uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to be doing this once um, like in a month where we can get people gathered together online and we all share ideas. So if you want to be part of this, um, just send us um, an email um, at um, farmerobng at gmail.com or um, you can also uh, uh, comment on the show today or even send us a comment on any of um, our live shows and um, just let us know you want to be part of it and uh, we should be able to get that going. So if we are able to get f 10 um, farmers that want to be part of it, then uh, we should be able to get that going. All right, guys. Uh, so that's that for that. While we're still waiting on, um, on Alaji to join us, um, let's, um, you know, say thank you once again for being part of the show, for subscribing, for sharing, and um, for all the views. I know sometimes it's not easy to sit down and watch a um, YouTube channel for one hour, especially in Nigeria, but um, we're very grateful, you know, for you guys um, always doing that. And um, like yes, we said, we are um, a, thousand, a thousand subscriber right now, which is um, a great feat. Remember, guys, we just started um, this not quite long ago. And so a thousand subscribers, that's that's wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. So we have Alaji online right now. So I'm going just going to have him come on and so that we can, you know, get on with the show. All right. Hello. Alaji. Hi, good day. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Good evening. We almost didn't have you on the show, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I think it's your prediction. And actually, I'm in Kaduna, yeah. so the network here is a little bit, it's not so good as it is in Kaduna, when I'm in Kaduna. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Uh, well, that, that's, yeah. thank you for joining up and um, for being part of the show once again. Um, You're most welcome. Like, yeah, so... Um, I was just going to go straight ahead. Um, you've, we've, you've introduced yourself once again, and I'm um, just going to say, Alaji, guys, this is Alaji Aliu Lawa Aliu, um, who is um, a dairy farmer and um, he fattens up cows as well um, in Katina. And um, he's also, um, you know, he has his own personal farm, which um, he does as well. So um, our topic today is about camel, which is what you do as well. So exactly, camel. I I used to be of the thought that um, it's basically for um, transportation. That well, that's what we always see in the movies. <laughs> you know, for transportation. Um, is that the reason why you're farming that for transportation or is there any special reason, any other reason why, you know, you know, we we'll, we'll want you to share the secret behind this for, with us. Okay. Um, years back, Camel mm -hmm. has been used for transportation. Yes. We all know about the, the Silk Road, mm -hmm. all from the Northeast of Africa, they follow through the Silk Road to China, yes. China. Camel went through all this, and then we know how the cow camel built Australia, mm. and we know how camel is being used for transportation in the Middle East, mm. and actually in Africa here, camel is actually meant for is is a trailer of the desert. Mm. But then recently, because of globalization, 
and uh, the fact that now everything is shrinked, the camera cannot. We have railway station, we have rail rails, we have roads, we have airlines. So there's no more need for the camera for transport. So more, where camera is mostly situated in the in the Arabian Peninsula to the to China, Mongolia, India, you have camels there. But really now nobody is using that for transport. Even though I know here in Katsina, people use it to carry load from one farm to another. In fact, people yeah. even use the camel for their as as more as like their, to, to pull yeah. their plows. People use them here in farming. And uh, but recently now, because of the globalization and the fact that everything is shrinked together. So mostly camel yeah. herders remain in one particular place where they raid the camels, they keep them, and then they milk them. Because yeah. any most of the camel herders live on the camel. They drink the milk as a food. So most yeah. camel herders now stay in one place, they, they milk the camels, they feed on them, and, and they sell, and that's the business they do. Wow. So, yeah. wow, that's, that's wonderful. So from what everything you said now, you said um, they milk them because uh, from our topic, that's, you know, the main thing we used as a topic, the secrets um, of caramel milk. Um, what's, what's so unique about caramel milk? Okay. Uh, biblically, Islamically, we know that uh, Islamically, there has been prescribed, a prophet has prescribed the caramel milk and urine as medicinal as medicine cure to ailments. Now, locally again, with the fact that we would research, we know that the camel milk have some uh, some medicinal incline in it that cures mm. some certain illness in the body. Um, if we know that uh, it cures, uh, uh, like I know, it, if you if you are taking camel milk, if you are diabetic and you are taking camel milk, you don't have to use insulin because yeah. it has some, uh, some amount of those, uh, I don't know the medical term for it, but definitely if you are diabetic, if you are diabetic and you, are, you have camel milk, then mm. it cut down your insulin re uh, requirement. I know camel milk is, has been used to, to cure uh, hepatitis A and B. I know camel milk is used in, in cosmetics industry, in the beauty industry, in soap and other things. But generally here, locally, as I, in a set up here, mostly people use camel milk for any, for a lot of things, especially mostly, I know people that have little, little, you know, uh, sickness, they use it and then mix it with other herbs to get the best out of the milk as a cure for some other diseases. So actually, this is the, this is the main thing in the, in the industry. The milk is used for medicinal value. I know in the US, I know there's a lady that has been propagating the camel milk and they use the milk to cure autism. I personally, I had a, I had a customer that is in Lagos whose son was autistic and uh, he read it online that camel milk takes health in that. And he, he, he contacted me and I sent him milk. And for almost a month, he called me one time and he was thanking me because his son that, has, that used to be very violent Sometimes he'll be hitting his head on the wall. He doesn't hit his head anymore. From the first week he started taking the milk, that boy started getting better. In fact, he told me that a month after taking the milk, he was taking on regularly on a daily basis. If one day the boy looked at him and called him Papa, and he couldn't wow. believe it, and he was so happy. He was so happy for that. So I know in US, they use it to cure autism. And I know also here, if you are giving your kid camel milk, it makes them very intelligent. It makes them very digestive. I think this is one of the, one of the reasons why in U.S. is regarded as a superfood. Probably you may wow. you, you, you may choose to Google and read more about it, but oh, definitely yeah. it's a, they call it the superfood of the next century. Yeah, um, I've actually, in fact, I have it online right now. So it's one of the research that I made when we we were going to talk about the show. Um, yeah. So we've talked about um, milking them. What else can can we use them for? Do they eat camel meat as well? Is yes, camel meat. Um, well? Even you know, most people will tell you that 
they don't they don't eat camel milk but in the north every market you go there's camel milk camel meat even in the south they take them all the way to lagos but the butchers will not tell you that this is camel milk meat mm. they will slaughter their camel in the abattoir and then sell mm. their meat to the people but here in Katsina in Katuna, i know camel milk is very good in fact i have i have a gout and i was told that if i keep taking camel milk it will cure my gout so mm. i just i eat camel milk i mean camel meat and believe me sincerely the meat is very tender the meat mm. is very nice but definitely i know some people complain that the meat the meat is very hard yes if you get an old camel that has actually gone through all the trauma of life naturally mm. the meat would be a little bit tough but the best meat you can eat of camel milk that is as tender as that of a lamb is a camel meat that that camel is no more than a year and a half old okay that meat is very tender in fact if you go to the uae they use that if you have a, if you have a very important guest and you want to give him a good meal, meat they cook a camel that is less than a year old that meat is as soft as how do i put it i have taken many times it's as soft as the back of the, the front of a bunny it's very wow. soft wow yes okay. so mostly but generally in nigeria i'll tell you every abattoir you go in the north they slaughter camel meat but because of some people who have some uh they may not like it the butchers will not tell you but i have seen mm. it, even in lagos i went to lagos and i was i saw camels in one of the abattoir and so yeah they slaughter them here but definitely the, they will not tell you so an average man will just go to the market to buy meat but he doesn't know he's eating actually camel camel, camel uh meat. <laughs> wow. yes but so it's it's, it's a, actually it's a good meat oh, it's a very okay. good meat it's low so, in high very very low in cholesterol very wow. very low in cholesterol yes wow. and then uh and we, if you are taking it you don't have the uric acid build up if you are taking the meat the meat mm -hmm. you don't have the uric acid build up in you wow, that's that that's that's so wonderful um so as a farmer how are, are they basically farmed um on um uh, on desert area or desert area or you know does it have to be i how would i put the question how do you farm them how do you produce them how, where do you house them if you want to have a, okay. a, a camel ranch where can i locate one where can i um, have one situated okay recently recently with the with the upcoming people have actually become more aware of the camel industry you can keep a camel anywhere you can keep like i have seen camel in uh michigan and i've you know michigan is it has a high rainfall high snow yeah. it's a very poor yet but yet you have you have camel farms in michigan so which means in nigeria you can you can keep your camel anywhere you are in nigeria mm. anywhere you are the camel will survive but then it's good where to house it whenever there is so much rain it's good to have a house to house it but generally a camel you can keep it anywhere i started well actually i started based on the I'm, I'm i'm doing my business in kaduna and i have to move to katsina we started a, a, a tomato factory and then being in katsina and actually from katsina i started i realized that there is so much demand in camel milk people that have this sickness and one other sickness they are always looking for where to get camel milk so mm -hmm. i was actually one day i was sitting and i was going online i realized in australia the australian government was actually killing the the stray camels in australia later the government realized that we are killing camels and yet they are uh, uae they are bringing chocolate and camel milk from uae to australia what are we doing mm -hmm. so the, the australian government stopped killing and then they started giving license if you want to open a camel farm they will give you license and actually they started giving tutorials and lectures webinars webinars on camel management camel nutrition i have gone through so many of those web webinars and all of them came from australia so this mm -hmm. in australia they started the camel uh camel dairy camel industry farming like it is in the uae where it has been where they've been doing it for a long time so coming to katana and i realized that there's so much demand for camel milk and yet those you see are just the pastures around around the town and then those ones they actually the way they milk the camel is very dirty there's no mm. hygiene in it but people are still buying so then yeah. i started discussing with a friend 
was I discussed with a friend in, in Dubai. So we realized, ah, look, what are you, you can do it. Why can't you do it? I said, I'm interested. So then I started actually buying camels. That was how I started my the camel dairy. I bought a couple of camels. There are about almost nine females then. So I realized after I cared for some time, I realized I bought the wrong set of camels because mm. what, what we have here around Kasana and Nigeria towards the year are camels that will give you very little amount of milk. It's like if you it's like in the cattle industry, if you have the white full ani compared to the to the freshian, compared to the freshian, mm. you know the freshian has more milk. So yes. I realized in the camel industry, I was buying white full anis. So I had to go, I had to dispose those ones and actually went to the border between Nigeria and then uh, Chad. I was able to get some particular breed from Sudan. Those ones have mm. more milk. The one I had before were giving me maybe a liter or two liters per kernel a day. And it wasn't mm. good for business. So after I disposed them, I started getting those ones from Sudan. I was able to get those that would give me six liters, eight liters of milk per kernel. And then that was that was actually okay. Then I had actually dairy cows again. When I put, I tried to compare, I realized well, in every let's say day, I have people booking for my camel milk, and then for my cows, I have I have to create the market, and then people have before mm. come to buy. And then I compared that in the camel in the in the cow milk, I was selling a liter in Casina for about five hundred naira, while the camel milk I was selling a liter for about a thousand naira. Wow. And then when and then in management, in management, it cost me uh it cost me more to maintain the cows than to maintain the camel. What I will use to feed uh the amount of money I will use to feed um uh, five cows is what I will use to feed 15 camels. Wow. So I realized this one is cheaper, and then there's much stress. And when it comes to like disease and infection, there is more tolerance in the camel. That it is with the cows, so I actually start concentrate. I started I started buying more ca camels, and that's how I continue the journey. And every day we have we are being booked fully. We we shifted the milk. We ship milk every day to, to sometimes to Kano, some other days to Abuja, some other days even to Lagos, uh, Mina, Niger said, I think even Port Harcourt. Last week we sent somebody. We sent somebody in Port Harcourt. So wow. we sent all. We, yeah. We, we still milk all over now. Mm. Wow, that's that's so wonderful. So um, we've talked about um, how you could um, create a, an, um, a ranch for them. We've talked about the unique benefits um, about um, about um, caramel production and the milk. Um, the other thing I would want to talk about is um, the financial part of it. How easily is it to start something like that uh, is, is it like very expensive do i like what would you say or, or just to, can you get aff easily afford a, a camel not to talk about buying five six you know so yeah compared to how we buy frasians the cam uh, crosses in cows the camels are cheaper yeah. and uh easier to maintain management uh, with uh, with uh, with two hundred and fifty thousand, you can get a camel. Mm -hmm. You can get a female camel that can give you all the milk you can start with. And to say, and then you don't need to have a big ranch. You know, you don't. For a camel, just have a place where it can stay there, where it can move around, and that is all. But then, mm -hmm. from my for the mystics, I, let me tell you from my mystics before. When I bought the first nine camels, I was doing completely stall feeding. Okay. My camels were in one particular place. Then we we're feeding them, but I realized I was having issues with the camels because a camel needs a lot of vitamin E and selenium, mm -hmm. which I cannot get from the feed I give them. And then I started to realize most of them started having the legs started swollen. Mm -hmm. And I consult, consulted a doctor in, uh, in UAE she advised me on actually letting them out, let them go and room, and then if they can browse for an hour or two, let them come back and then I will continue. Semi-intensive care, that's something like that. Yeah. Okay. And I did that and I realized, yeah, it's okay for the camels, they like it. 
So here in Nigeria, if you want to keep camels, whether you are in the north or in the south or in the east, your camels will do perfectly. Since, you can, since now we can keep camels in Michigan, then definitely you can keep them there. But if you are in the east or south, probably it's good to have a little bit shelter from the rain. Mm. So they can come in and then, yeah, from the rain. But, uh, but on normal days, you can list them. They can go around. They can browse because they are browsers. They browse and come yeah. back and then they can feed. Why, why we allow them to browse like in the north here? Because of the, the, most of the, the medicinal value of the milk, they need to eat some little herbs or plants to be able to have mm. those, uh, those uh, nutrients that actually help in the, in the medicine that the milk gives. So we allow them to browse for a while. So mostly you need somebody, that a herder, that will take them out and then bring them back. Mm. But generally, if you have interest, you can start with just two camels because it's not good to have just one camel. They, are, it's a, they mostly it becomes very lonely. But with no, two camels, yeah. you can start. It. Yes, like I did the first time, like from my mistake when I was buying camels, I went and bought camels. I bought nine to ten camels. <laughs> but then I realized that I have to keep. I have to keep them. They have to Sorry, get pregnant yeah. for okay. a year before mm -hmm. I can, for one year, 12 months before I can benefit from them. Mm -hmm. So that is my mistake. So later on, after I was able to go through that, the next time I was buying camels, and when I bought all pregnant camels. Mm -hmm. So when they came, from two months after they came, they started dropping. Sorry, and that is when I continued my milking. And then mm -hmm. actually, from the sense I've gotten, I think I would advise everybody to. First, get a pregnant cow. Then you don't mm -hmm. have to wait for a year. Mm -hmm. So that was how we started, and honestly, it's been it's been wonderful. That, that's good, and, and it's going to get even better. By, by God's yeah. grace, uh, that's that's so nice. Uh, so let's let's walk back to the the health, um, all the stuff they are made for. From what I read online, I saw I actually read mostly from um, Australia as well. And I know you've been talking about Australia, Australia, Australia. Um, I can see that there's a lot of um, Carmel Farm there. They are like really doing it um, intensively over there. And um, so th it's used for skincare, um, health yeah. issues, like you said. That's yeah, man, that's bold. That's that. That's yeah, I, camel, you diamond. can use the milk. Yeah, you can use the milk to make soap. You can use the milk to make lotions. You can use the milk to make creams. Wow. If you check online, you see different lotions, different soaps. Yeah, different that, that's that's what I'm saying. I I see you know a lot of companies that you know soaps, creams, and things like that. And I'm like, wow, who would have known that this is possible from such an animal? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. It comes. I have seen companies now, especially here. I've seen people. It's also that people that contact me here that they want mm -hmm. to. They, they want to have the uh, the milk, so that they can use it for make creams. And not only the milk, even the urine. The urine is very good. The urine is used mm -hmm. for cosmetics also. Wow. So, and actually, the urine is also used for medicinal value. It's used in, for medicines also. Because I have seen a company, UAE, that make the urine tablets. If you cannot drink the urine, they, they hybridize it, and then they mix it in tablets. And then people buy it, and then you mix it with the milk, and then you drink it. Wow. Wow. That, that's so Yes, that's so I, have used, uh, I have used uh, the urine. We use it on my daughter's hair, and actually, we realize after an hour, it's well, it's, well, it's like silk like. Hmm. It's like silk like, and it was we are so impressed with what we what we what the result. So actually, there was one time I was looking for anybody that like a lady that is into into this cosmetic that we can give her the urine. She can make good uh, hair products. It makes hair the products. hair grow well. Hmm. It makes the hair grow well and silk like. Wow. So that's that's really a lot of um, unique stuff that can be done with it. It's uh, <laughs> so 
camel milk. How does it taste like? Uh, me, for me that is used to eat, I will tell you it's great. But it's like it's salty, not like the cow milk. It's a little bit salty. Okay. But then I'm used to eat that. I can't really tell you, but most people will tell you that it's salty. And I realize, mm. yes, it is salty. But honestly, honestly, I use it like in my office. I use it, I use it for, to take coffee every morning. Mm. I, I definitely would have to try it so that um, I can And I will, not, I, will, I will tell you one part, one secret. Yeah. So people use it as an aphrodisiac, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, I definitely would have to try it. Um, so when you yeah, milk them, sure. do you do you also have to like um process it or how do you huh? do you just um do you have to process like the milk okay before you no. you no mostly, get it out? mostly because because the milk is used for medicinal value. If you process it, that means you have to pasteurize it. If you pasteurize yeah. it below above 90 degrees, you've killed all the nutrients that help in the medicinal value of the milk. Mm. So mostly we don't pasteurize the milk. We sell it raw. raw. I have seen even in US, in US is the only milk that is allowed to be sold raw. Mm. The milk. Mm -hmm. So we, I don't we supply you if you want to pasteurize it. Sure, you can go ahead and pasteurize it, but we don't mm. pasteurize it because to, so as to maintain the medicinal value of that milk. Oh, so we don't pasteurize it. We as soon yeah. as we extract it from the cow, we put it directly to the freezer, and when it gets freeze, we ship mm. it to anywhere we want to ship. So it comes to you fresh. We all we are we are all very careful on the handling because if mm. you don't handle it well, you have particles that will go in and then actually start the fermentation, even though. Even if the milk you don't, if if you keep the milk and the milk is there for two weeks, it's still it will it will, it will sour, but then it's still good. So we, mm. but I want I always want my customers to get their milk fresh. So we fridge and then we can use it to spoil. Yeah. Okay. Well, we do. We um. We definitely have to come down to your farm and do um a video tour of um how your setup is and everything. Uh, you know, because I it's 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 some I I love hearing about new things I've never heard before that I'm like you know you don't actually look at and it's amazing because um from the little I've read online as well. I'm like, are you serious? This is this possible? And um, I'm hearing it from you as well. You know, it's it's really you know a, a wonder milk. That's what it needs to be called. It <laughs> was, it's a you know, it's a wonder milk. Uh, so ah uh, wow. Are they milked by hand? You know, or do you have to use um equipment or something? You say what? And do you milk them with, by hand, or do you have to use uh, okay. sort of like a milking equipment? Uh, initially, we started milking them with the hand. Okay. And you know, one thing with a camel is you don't just go to a straight and start milking. No, she will, she will let down. A camel will mm. not let down. Mm. You, mostly, but I've seen UAE, they train them to actually, once you go into the milking parlor, they let down. But here, we haven't trained ours to that level yet. So if you're going to milk her, you have to bring the fowl to come over the calf to start suckling. When he suckles for about maybe five minutes, by then she has let down the milk. Then you remove him away, and then you wash the other, and then you start milking. I have started milking with the hand. My herder is very good. He can milk, he can milk five camels in less than 30 minutes. He can milk them dry. Wow. So, but later on, I was able to get a milking machine and we tried it with a camel. At first, it didn't work because once the camel sees something different, it won't, mm. it won't, it won't let down the milk. But, but gradually, gradually, I have three now, about four of them now, that once we put the, once we put the milking machine, they let down and the milk starts coming down. Mm. But we still have about other that we're actually training them to get used to the milk. But if it's on the hand, easily you get the milk down. 
but we've been training them. It's, it takes it's gradually, gradual, and we are actually on it. So hopefully, by the next few months, all of them will start. Will start. Will, will continue with the milking machine. But now we have few that will do with milking machine, and then few that will do with the hand. But actually, we take cure. We take drastic measure on hygiene. We take serious measure on hygiene. I don't. I, I don't. I don't compromise that. I do mm -hmm. not. Okay, so how how would you go about um, if I want to start um, you know, a, a camel farm as well? Do you are you open to helping others? You're already open already because you're you're sharing the idea with us in the first place. Uh, but if someone wants to contact you to get more information, would you be open for stuffs like that? Oh, I know you're a very busy, you know, man. Oh, man, certainly. Too, I but... anybody that needs assistance, of course, I'm there to help. I can help you. Mm -hmm. why, why, why? It's a, it's a, it's a small world. I can come <laughs> back to you one day looking for something. So <laughs> anybody true. that wants assistance, no, why not? We can help them. We can help them get the camel, the right camel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said, a pregnant one. A pregnant. And one. You can start it, and it, there's no so much, what, what would the pregnant camel cost? Uh, okay, but that's why you get between 250. To Sorry about the um, the freezing, guys. You know, how it is Anything above maybe 270. Yeah, so between 250 to 70. Yeah, you will get a pregnant, a pregnant kernel. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, how Hopefully is that? Like, maybe she comes in two months, yeah. she's let down, or three months, and you can continue, but I will not. I will not want somebody to go through the same mistake I did. Yeah, that's that's true. And um, how easily um, do you do you apart from you know grazing them, having an head that would walk them around? How do you feed them? Do you, are they processed okay. feeds, or do you have to just cut grass for them, or what? Uh, a camel is the cheapest animal you can keep. Is the cheapest. In fact, a goat you, a goat is difficult to maintain compared to a camel. A camel mm. is the cheapest animal you can keep. All the camel needs, you see, is like let it graze. If you have a, if you have a place for it to graze, it's okay for it. A camel has a very good conversion conversion rate. Give camel any shrub that any cow will not eat. The camel will eat and give you quality, <laughs> give you milk, give you good weight. A camel is the cheapest animal you can feed. You don't give camel grains like we do with cattle. No. You don't we concentrate. You don't even bother. You may want to give them, but a very small quantity, but definitely no grains. Because the camel's uh, intestine is not meant to digest grains. It's mm -hmm. meant to digest shrubs. So shrubs. if you have shrubs, you have grasses, leave it to your camel. If you have hay, give your camel, and that is all. It can feed on that. And even tomorrow, if you don't have any feed, it doesn't care. It will wait next tomorrow when you have it. You give it. If you give it water today and tomorrow you don't get water, a camel doesn't care. It can wait for <laughs> the next seven days for you to give it water. To give it water. So it's a very, very easy animal to maintain. It doesn't have much problem. It's very, very cheap. If you have like in the south, where you have grass all over, cut grass and give you, let it feed. Tomorrow, if you don't get time, leave them. You don't get your time also. Mm -hmm. Next tomorrow, go cut and give them to his satisfaction. And you don't have a problem. So long as, because then the side, you have the grass is actually green and it's lushed. So leave it. Any shrub you could see, any leaf, just give your camel, it will eat. And you don't have a problem. It's a very, very easy camel to maintain. Very easy. I can remember towards the end of last year, uh, I had I, most of the hay I had finished. And we mm. kept them for almost three days. They, didn't, they, were, they, were, they were not feeding anything. And they were not eating. And we were still making them. Huh. So that's how, how easy it is to manage a camel. Wow. So I have a unique question I want to ask you. Why do okay. you think camel milk, the meat, it's not popular? Or how do we... How do we make something like that popular because anything that is easy to maintain like you've said it's um that means it, it's going to be a, a easier for us to produce 
you understand and it's all you it's see, got all mostly uh, good health benefits for us it's good for us so how do you make such farming popular you know camel milk and the meat itself you see it's all about uh most people will tell you i don't want, i don't eat camel but the truth about it is you've been eating camel all your life and you don't know <laughs> if you just say, okay, we don't, we won't eat caramel milk like in the, in the north, everybody eats caramel milk. Yeah. But some of them will still have to read out tell that you don't like caramel milk. But actually, mm -hmm. they've been eating all their life, but they realize it. In the south and the east, especially in the east, where you realize every meat is a meat. Mm -hmm. milk, people eat caramel milk there anytime. You read, mostly here is the problem is usually in the north, I mean in the south, most people mm -hmm. tell you, no, they see, they see the caramel then they will not want to eat the milk. But if you are preparing milk, if you go to any abattoir and you see milk well packaged, you buy your meat now and you go and eat your meat. People have been eating bush meat. They don't even know what it yeah. is like. Yeah. So it's just it's just um, it's just an issue of it's a personal issue. If you see a camel, you may not want to eat the milk. But actually, by the time they do suya with the meat, you know which what animal it is, <laughs> and you enjoy your suya. Simple. Mm, uh, there you go <laughs> thank you so much uh, Alaji. I'm always happy to talk to you always glad um, the wealth of information it's um, it's wonderful uh, you, and you're always willing to share the ideas with us and everything um, thank you so much um, also with yeah, your with, with, with your help and everything our YouTube channel is um, going up to 1000 subscriber so, which is um, quite good. It means that we have a lot of people, you know, watching us, listening to you. And um, we're very grateful for you being part of the show as well. Um, like I said, I would want to, very soon, I'm trying to think of what I can do that will come to the farm and share how, you know, actually do a video production of how the farm, your farm is, and how you go about um, the day-to-day -day running of the farm. Uh, so that people would understand how everything is done. So um, I hope, you know... I'll, when... I'll help you on that. I'll try and work a video for you and then send to you one of these days. Oh, that would be wonderful. That, that no be problem. Wonderful, so that we can share that um, online as well. And No um, problem. I have, um, you know, some of the subscribers here. Um, Gaba um, Awal, uh, he wants to know your address, but... Um, I'm just going to say um, we have Alaji's Al um, contact scrolling at the bottom of the screen. You can send him a WhatsApp message and um, he should be able to, um, you know, talk to you better and, you know, and let you know exactly where the farm is in Castina and all that. Uh, so that, that should help. And um, any other thing you would like to, your last words for us. What are your last, last words concerning this topic and, um, you know, farming in general, uh, concerning um, agriculture in Nigeria? Uh, my last words is actually to, uh, to anybody intending to go into this business. It's very easy to do, and you can do it anywhere you are in Nigeria. Where our population is huge. We need, we yeah. need this, so, so, this, kind of, this kind of business, other simple business we can do. And we need a source of income. This is a good source mm -hmm. of income. And I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you this. Camel is the easiest cam, cam, animal you can fatten. It will take mm. you 90 days to uh, 120 days to fatten a bull. With a camel, you need less than you about 60 days. And it's the cheapest camel you can fatten. So those oh, that wow. want to go in that business can actually go for the fattening. It's a very good aspect for the camel. They are very mm -hmm. easy to maintain with beautiful feet. I can assure you a camel can live in anywhere in Nigeria, anywhere in Nigeria, mm. array of camels. And believe mm. me sincerely, they are not like cows where you are thinking of somebody's coming to steal them. Nobody will steal your camels. In fact, mm. it's not a good, you have to be a good herder for you to steal camels. <laughs> so in terms of security, you don't have, you don't have a problem with that. Mm. So my last one is anybody that is interested in this, it's a very good business. And if you need any help, you can call me anytime, any day. I can assist you. I can talk to you. I can I can give I can help you through. 
there you go. That's the last word from Alaji and you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us once again. You're most welcome. Uh, if you have any issue, like you said, anything you want to talk about, please contact him. We have his number scrolling at the bottom of uh, the the um, the screen. Just um, contact him on there, and um, he will be able to share the ideas with you. Um, thank you so much once again, Alaji. Uh, we are about. Most um, okay, um, we're going to be talking to you again because this is not and you know th that's not the end of the topic there's still so many other things we will talk about and um have a wonderful night i know it's night over there now so have a wonderful night and um thank you very we'll much talk to you once again all right cheers okay bye 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 bye, -bye. all right there you have it guys um that's um, Alaji Aliu talking to us about um, caramel milk and um, the uniqueness of um, um, caramel production. Um, the milk, it's a wonder product from what we've heard. Um, it helps with a lot of stuff. And um, if you want to know more about it, just go online and, um, you know, Google caramel milk and... Um, and uh, you should be able to get more information of um, how you can go about it. And if you, like you said, if you, like I, uh, he said, if you have any um, help you need on how to go about starting up your camel farm or getting into the, the fattening of the camel and or the milk, just contact him. His number is uh, scrolling at the bottom of the screen and um, you will be able to help you. Once again, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. And um, thank you for being there always and um, not um, minding how sometimes our show, our live show goes with a technical issue. You still stay online. Thank you, Gaba Awa. Well. Thank you, Margaret Ogulipe. Uh, thank you, guys, and um, for joining us. I'm going to say God um, be with you guys. And... Um, we should be able to see you next week with another good topic. And also remember what we talked about, what I talked about, uh, about um, getting, you know, five to 10 farmers online where we can have sort of like um, a dialogue or conference. Um, it, no matter what the topic is, we just, um, let's just come on. If you're interested, do um, send in a comment and let us know so that um, we'll know how to organize this. Thank you and do have a lovely day.